I can't see him too well. He's in the, like the reeds here. All right, let's see. I hope it's one. Right? It, I'm not tripping, right? Yep, yep, yep. Is he in there? Yep, he's in there. Is it one? Uh huh. Uh huh. You do not know how long <laughs> I wanted to see one of those. Water. It covers 71% of the Earth's surface and is the reason that life on our planet can exist. And the closer you are to water, the more varieties of life you can find. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and in my mission to uncover the secrets of the little things we share our world with, I find myself in northern Florida, combing the swamps for unusual creatures. What looks like a tangle of vegetation and some canals to you, hides a secret world full of some of the most alien life forms you've ever seen, and to find them, we're going to need to head out after dark. You know how much I like looking for creatures after dark, but today, looking for creatures not just after dark, but in aquatic habitats. So something that you've been asking for a long time. And, and there's more. I'm not alone out here in the Florida wilderness where I'm looking for these aquatic creatures. I'm here too, everyone. Me, Jack, from Jack's World of Wildlife. We'll need his help on a dangerous adventure, so looking dangerous. for dangerous, Horrific aquatic creatures. Scary. I'm scared already. My blood is pumping and my eyes are ready to scan these aquatic environments for the creatures we're hoping to find in this lovely area. Yep, so let's get to it. Scanning ahead with lights and watching our steps carefully, we head out into the night. Even in the chilly air, the forest is alive with a symphony of disembodied calls dark, but we're looking for some of the fiercest aquatic insects Florida has to offer. And Jack called out to me that he'd found our first apparitions of the night. Starting a collection. <laughs> See, I've got, I've got three <laughs> beauties so far. Look at that. Those things are freaking huge. Uh-huh. They bite you. Not yet. Grab yourself one. Plenty to They're go around. Slippery. Super slippery. They are the definition of hydrodynamic. Perfectly adapted to glide through the water and obliterate fish prey. They are gnarly. We've actually seen a few of them devouring little minnows in here. Mm -hmm. They've got pretty powerful little jaws. Yeah, I'm trying not to get bit. <laughs> that they will happily bite you with and really cool flat kind of broad back legs that they use to paddle pretty quickly through the water. They can kind of chase down. They can, they can oh, match yeah. speed with a lot of these minnows. I always say the appearance of an animal can give you lots of clues to its biology. And just look at that shape there. That plating they have is not just super hard and armored, but it is extremely interlocked. So they can just glide through the water. The fish out here stand no chance. Those flippers, give them extremely amazing maneuverability in that aquatic environment, more so than the fish. These weird flippery legs are great underwater, but they're basically useless on land. On so. land, they just flounder and flop around. They look kind of awkward, but that's yeah. part of the give and take of it perfectly adapting to an aquatic lifestyle. You kind of forget about. How did I used to walk on land again? I don't remember. It's not important anymore. It's been hundreds of millions <laughs> of years since they had an ancestor. That's not going to be on the test. Forget about it. So, uh, it may be the terrors of the aquatic ecosystem, but it's not something you have to worry about. They're really, really cool to see though. Cause you'll see this big black shape in these puddles and canals and stuff, oftentimes chasing and tearing apart fish. Really, really cool, but it's not the most menacing predator we could possibly come across out here. No, certainly not. There's say, definitely a, a bigger kahuna in these waters. So I say, uh, let's get back out in the night and see if we can find one of those. We've got our target. Somewhere in this swamp, could be an insect that I've wanted to see in person all my life, and one that you've been requesting for ages. And with all the fish activity in these canals, it wouldn't be a surprise to see one. These ambush predators wait on the reeds for unsuspecting fish to swim by, so that's where we're scanning. Their flat body plan makes them look like a leaf floating in the water, so we'll need to be extra careful. That being said, they're not the only camouflaged assassins lurking in these murky waters. So right here, yep, that's what I thought it was. A little water scorpion. I'm gonna scoop them out. They're not usually very fast. Oh, buddy. oh yeah. Hi. Look at that. These 
are actually my favorite insects because they're so weird looking. They look kind of like a hybrid between a walking stick, a giant water bug, and a praying mantis. And their name, the scorpion, probably comes from those claws right in the front because the water scorpions really aren't known to like sting or bite. Like they probably could bite if you really tried, but like they're not really known to bite people. What I do like to see though, is if these guys are out, that means it's very possible their close cousin, the giant water bug might actually be out. And that's actually an insect I haven't seen before. Jack has told me this is a spot that's pretty good for giant water bugs. So it's something that I'm kind of hoping to see while I'm down here in Florida. But I do like seeing cool, awesome insects like this. Look at how weird it looks. So skinny and like stick-like. One of their nicknames is the water stick insect because they actually look like a little walking stick under the water. But don't be fooled. Unlike a walking stick, they're not eating vegetation. They're eating all kinds of other little animals. I would imagine he's probably not big enough to take down fish, probably smaller invertebrates, but his cousin is absolutely taking fish. And the fish are out in numbers. Not all of them are tiny either. There, 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 there. Might be a different one. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a bigger one. Got him? Uh-huh. <laughs> Let's see that thing. Take a look at this, folks. This is really and truly the uh, top predator of these little tiny ponds here. This little pickerel, he's got a big old mouth full of sharp teeth and he is destroying the little top minnows and other tiny fish um, that are just right in here, also getting obliterated by aquatic insects. Oh! He's upset because he's been captured. He's usually the top dog on the food chain. Nighttime in the swamp is unnerving. You're surrounded by creatures watching you from the shadows, and you're watching every step, hoping that the ground is trustworthy. But let's be honest, the creepy atmosphere is kind of part of the fun. And what better backdrop to search for one of the most alien insects in North America? As I was scanning the canals, I saw something flat and round move for a second against the current. Could this be our water bug? Yo, Jack, bring the net. What you got? I think I've got a water bug. Really? Yeah, I can't see him too well. He's in the, like the reeds here, right in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right, let's see. I hope it's one, right? It, I'm not tripping, right? Did you get him? Did you get him? Did you get him? Yep, yep, yep. Is he in there? Yep, he's in there. Is it one? Uh-huh, uh-huh. <gasps> Dude! <sighs> you do not know how long <laughs> I wanted to see one of those. He's a lot softer than I expected him to be. Maybe he might have molted recently. But have a look at that insect right there. That is probably one of the gnarliest insects we could have possibly found out here. I don't want to move too much because that is one heck bad bite if I were to receive it. I know people are in the comments like, get bit, get bit. Look, there's not really a whole lot of like myth busting I need to do with this insect. These guys, the likelihood you're gonna get bit by it is so, so low. I really don't feel like I need to test that bite, but I do want to appreciate this creature because it is an absolutely fascinating insect. This is the largest true bug in North America. You're like, Spencer, what about like praying mantises and stuff? Okay, there's a difference between a bug and an insect. All bugs are insects. Not all insects are bugs. Now we do use bug, we throw it around for all kinds of invertebrates and creepy crawlies, but bug actually refers to one specific group of insects. And this is the largest of the ones we have here in North America. And not only is it the largest, it's also one of the most voracious predators. This right here is gonna be eating vertebrates, fish, tadpoles, small frogs. This little thing right here is the scourge of this freshwater canal ecosystem. Those big old pickerels, they probably aren't prey for this thing, but I guarantee you, if they come across this underwater, they swim fast in the opposite direction. Those raptorial claws right in the front work just like the claws of a praying mantis. They lash out, they grab onto prey, and then it delivers a bite, a venomous bite. This insect, 
is venomous. Some people might push back on that, but this guy is armed with incredible paralyzing toxins that stop their prey in their tracks. In the aquatic world, you wanna subdue prey as fast as possible because like I said, there's always a bigger fish. If that thing struggles, something bigger might come over and eat both of you. So the faster this guy can paralyze and kill his prey, the better chance he has of not only getting a meal, but also avoiding something like a big bass or even a small alligator coming over and eating them both. And then, so the second component of their venom comes in. These guys are equipped with a cytotoxin. It's gonna dissolve the insides of their prey so they can suck it out like a milkshake. True bugs can't chew like praying mantises or grasshoppers can. They have to eat entirely liquid food which means that this guy has some pretty special chemical properties. The venom of this insect makes it one of the most painful bites in the world. But at the end of the day, that venom is for its prey, not usually for people. And toe biters aren't necessarily seeking people out either, they just tend to show up at your porch light once in a while. At the end of the day, these are simple creatures just trying to make their way in the universe. And while they may be incredibly creepy, they prefer to spend their time deep in the swamps, fulfilling their role as a part of the secret world that surrounds us every day. And trust me, after dark, that secret world can get really creepy, even creepier than this insect. If you want to see one of the strangest creatures I've ever seen after dark, check out this video right here, where we explored the cloud forests of Ecuador. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.